the first clip. I'm just going to play the clip. I'm not going to play the whole show because, you know, the whole show is long. But this is a clip courtesy of the... Let me get back on the screen, actually. So this is a clip courtesy of the H3 Podcast Highlights channel. It's there, you see on the screen, uh, the title is Bobby Lee and Kalila opens up about Brendan Schultz bullying. So they're putting it in the title. They're not even shying away from it, right? They're putting it right there, front and centre, in the title, right? That my man is out here bullying people because he thinks that he deserves that. This is what it is, because he thinks that he, he deserves their girl more than they do. <laughs> imagine, imagine the flipping ego the um the i don't know is it i don't know what else you can describe it to think that you deserve somebody more than the other person like it's a conquest like you know what i mean like we're back in the flipping 1800s you're gonna ride through in your horse and just take someone's wife and fling her over your shoulder and ride away <laughs> what oh honestly absolutely mad but yeah let's play the video and see what they're saying and we're gonna go over it um I guess we can go through the whole thing. Maybe you might do bits and pieces. I've got a few clips to kind of run through here anyway in general. So maybe we can do a few of them, but let's just run through the first. Wait, we can't talk about it? Yeah, we can talk about it. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah. If you... <coughs> no, I uh, would love to. Talk about what? Why don't you want to talk about Brendan Schwab? But I, you're down. <laughs> no, no. So, uh, Brendan Schwab? Well, here's what I'll say no, about No, Brendan Schwab. Schwab? Schwab. Oh, Dr. Brendan Schwab, yeah, the insurance Schwab. salesman. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, I can talk about it, yeah. I call, I, call him a sh I call him a Schwab because he looks like a uh, a Schwab. You know, like, is that they call those Schwabs in the ear? Yeah. Uh, Swab? Okay. Yeah. You gently do it, but this <laughs> okay, is on you. This is on you. Okay, so Brendan. Here's what yeah, I this say. This is on you, and that's it. He's a comedian yeah. <laughs> that you have a podcast with... Uh, Two other very funny ladies called uh, Trash, Trash Tuesday. Tuesday. Right, with Esther Pavitsky and Annie Lennon. Annie. Yeah. Great show. Thank you. Love all three of you guys. <laughs> My heart's beating because I want to be delicate about this. 100%. Okay, yeah. You, you tread, tread lightly. I will tread lightly. So you guys were doing a show and you said that someone you guys knew right. was trying to okay. pick... Hold on, you don't want to even say... This is just... Well, just correct me where I'm wrong. Well, we don't yeah. need to stress you guys out. <laughs> it's going to distress him because... <laughs> Okay, go ahead, Ethan. <laughs> you okay, Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> so you guys said... Yeah. You know what? It's not even funny because he legitimately can see his career flashing before his eyes. And as somebody who's been a somewhat infrequent fan of Bad Friends and Tiger Belly, I know Bobby really cares about stand-up. Like, he's obsessed with stand-up. Um, he might not write a lot of mat new material. He might be a little bit annoying in terms of not filming a special. But when it comes to being a stand-up comedian, he loves it. He loves being a part of that community. He loves going to do spots. He loves to tour. He loves to meet his fans, get on stage, do silly things, fuck around. This is something that he legitimately has, you know, gained a lot from, right? Being a stand-up comedian. And he can legitimately see that being on this show is going to probably cause him way more pain than anything he's ever done in his entire life. But it's also a very, very necessary conversation to have. It needs to be had. This stuff needs to be put out there in public. So as much as he's probably thinking, hey, I hate this woman for bringing this up, it needs to be said because, you know, the stuff that's being alleged in here is just insane. Yeah. This guy, Brendan Schwab, you alluded to it. You said his initials was BS. Everybody now knows it's him, right? Um, well, the first time that we had talked, you know, it was, um, it was a story about someone who had hit on me seven years ago. It was a story oh, about someone. We never said his name during the first show. <clears throat> you guys were together seven years ago? Yes, we've been together nine. Mm. Okay, Playboy. Pound it for that. Fucking tricolored yeah. cock, but man. When is your 10-year anniversary? Next year. Next year. Okay. Um, ours is coming up. I was like, oh, oh maybe. Uh, 10 years. In married. October. <laughs> oh, October. <laughs> Wrong month. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks. Anyway. Um, Good lightly. With no intention other than to just tell a story about Funny something story. that happened. <coughs> yeah. Interesting. Just to get a good laugh, something that I thought might so be Seven relatable. years ago, he tried to pick you up, this comedian. 
Um, yeah, I, I told the story on Trash Tuesday, which was like, yeah. He tried it, and the story was interesting. He brought you to the car and tried to get a blowy or something? No, that's not me. That, oh, that, that was, was one of the other girls. Annie, yeah. and Because um, that's such an interesting way to pick up a girl, I think, to be like, yo, you want to come to my car and suck my cock? <laughs> Like, By the way, I should preface this by saying I had a phone call with him. All is squared away and fine. Okay. But he did promise. We promised that this would never be brought up again. But then he went on Flagrant 2 and talked about it. So I was like, all right, uh. deal's off. I'm going to talk about it on H. Deal's off. Uh. Yeah. So, um, but I'll be delicate about it because I do think that, you know, um, yeah, I don't want to be an asshole to, to anybody. Yeah. Right. Um, but are you friends with him? Is that the problem? Are you friends oh with, with Brendan? <laughs> You're acquaintances. Yeah, yeah. I'm friends with him. Do you think he's a funny comedian? Because a lot of people. I think he's great. Okay. I think he's wonderful. <laughs> I do. I think yeah, he's, he's a good guy. I really do. Dynamic. You know, I'll, can I just say something about him? All right. I want to say this. All right. Uh, I want to say that he tried to get. He tried to fuck your girl, no, dude. No, I'm get down that. I, I'm bang, bang. Woo! <laughs> Ah, okay. 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 All right. So I, short, I, it's just short. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, li I like to say this about the man. All right. You know, it's very difficult to go from one profession to another, right? So UFC. he was an MMA fighter, yeah. right? Mm. Really successful fighter. Very right? successful. Um, what was his re professional record? <sighs> it's not the record that counts. It's it's <laughs> what you do in the ring. You know what I mean? It's commitment. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I mean, it takes balls to get in the ring. Yeah, it does take balls. Can, can you guys pull his professional his professional record? It doesn't matter. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um. Sorry, damn, F ignore me. Sorry about that. Let's let's go again. This man on the screen has done nothing wrong, zero, nothing wrong, and look how miserable, right, and worried he looks about his career because another male comedian had the audacity to try to slide in his wife, basically DMs, knowing full well they were together. Just imagine. Just imagine the absurdity of the entire thing. How insane is that? Oh my God. I don't get it. I really don't get it. I really do not understand. It makes no sense whatsoever. Like, <laughs> oh, May. I don't know. I don't get it. Can you guys hear me now? I think, I think you can hear me now. Hopefully you can. But that was mad. I was ranting for a bit there for a second. And then no sound as per usual because Agostino streams are always filled with the most crazy tech issues. Anyway, so he, you know, and he goes into a very difficult medium, which is stand up comedy. It's yeah, it's clicky. It's very difficult, it, right. it's very difficult. And he carves his way out and he, he does a couple of specials. He's a successful podcaster and my hat's off to him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Very okay. Good. I mean, nice thing. All, yeah. all good vibes. Um, we've we've talked and um, everything's under the rug and everything's fine, and um, yeah. Although I would like to clarify, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, this is not. Well, you didn't you. finish your. Well, Bobby Bobby has some nice things to say. So I right. mean, you're you're in the middle of your story. Well, my problem with the whole thing was. Um, when he had a problem with me, he went through Bobby. Bobby was a filter, and I thought that was really um, not appropriate. He wouldn't because... talk to you? No. What is this? You're doing a toothpick? It's a nicotine toothpick. I'm stressed out. Are you serious? Nicotine? We're fucked. 
We're not fucked. <laughs> yeah, Wait, why are you fucked? Also, fucked. what did I say? Yeah, You're yeah. so afraid of being bullied. Why are you so afraid? Because like, this is the problem. It it all and it to his defense when this is good. when Shab had a problem with me never even saying his name. And by the way, I neither confirm or deny that that's to this day that that story was about him. What? All right, Kalila, come on, cut the bullshit. We know it was him. BS isn't gonna be flipping. Who they say it's gonna be? It's not gonna be fucking Bob Saga, is it? Like, let's be for real. Um, and we all know why the guy's scared. Like, it makes sense why he's scared. In essentially everything that everything people have been saying online, especially shout out to the homeless cast, they've always been saying that Joe Rogan has an oversized influence on that comedian on that comedy scene overall over there. No, probably not so much now because he's moved away, and it feels like since Joe's gone to Austin, he's completely cut himself off from everybody associated with the LA scene. But it's pretty clear that that whole entire group of people within that Joe Rogan JRE extended universe, they've got a real stranglehold on the clubs and the bookings and the mood and the scene, whatever it may be over there, they've got a real strangled hold on it. There's no denying it. So it's only natural that somebody like Bobby Lee, who's not the most confrontational, alpha -y, I'm going to fuck you up if you chat shit to me kind of guy, is going to be worried and nervous when he's in a situation that could maybe blackball him. When I, especially when I said in the beginning that Bobby clearly cares about stand-up. He's a, you know, he's a, he's a flipping, he loves it. He loves being a comedian. He, he lo everything that he kind of brought him in his life has only been positive. So clearly he's going to be worried that they're going to absolutely destroy his career off the back of this the gossipy section of a show that isn't considering his career at all. This is just something you know, I want to get my feelings out without thinking about the long-term repercussions or repercussions, as Brenda would say, the situation. So I can completely understand why he's flipping nervous about it. It makes complete sense. This is not him being a pussy. This is just clearly him worried that the powers that be who control that whole industry will see this and not look favorably on him and then he'll be out on his ass without booking shows again which obviously he clearly loves well you guys mm -hmm. said his initials was bs and then annie said it was bob saget on the live show oh, well and then no bob one saget of, bs no one of the things that really gave it away yeah is that you guys said that he's not very funny as a comedian and wow. then you guys all started laughing that's objective I just, I, no but i know that's like, like a meme about him i know you think he's funny yeah but there's like a meme that everyone's like he's the george carl of he's not funny that doesn't he's not funny. mean that they necessarily said <laughs> right. that it's him so i actually to this day i, I you never I said, said his I, name i never said yeah. it was assumed i didn't think that it would escalate in the way that it did i also didn't realize that bobby would take the brunt of the punishment um because nothing you know he didn't do anything i didn't do anything right and here's the here's my problem with just even this in general okay and since it's, we're already talking about it, fuck it, right? But what I'm saying to you is, is that I have nothing to do with any of it. I don't even know what the fuck the thing is about, really. You don't like being put in the right? middle of it. Not, not was I not put in the middle of it. I was being um, screamed at oh. and bullied. It was like a oh, cool. get your bitch in line phone call. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was, it was worse than that. It was way worse than that. And my point is, is I'm that sorry, that's just now my yeah. fear is... The, the results of whatever this is now going to be. Right. There's no results because there I, is there is a result. No, there you isn't. Know, you, 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 I'm, I, I can call Shab right now yeah. and we could be like all is squared away and everything is fine because we've already talked about it. The promise was that he would never talk about it again. So, but this woman's delusional. She thinks it's going to be completely cool. It's never cool. The whole reason why he probably denied it and was spinning it into the situation that it is now at the moment when it comes to Brendan is because of the impact it might have in his career and how he's basically looked at. Do you know what I mean, he doesn't want to come out of this looking like the bad person. So clearly he's going to spin it in a way to make it appear as if he's the good guy in this situation. But that's what is really messed up. That bit that Bobby said about receiving phone calls from other comedians in the scene. Um, Brendan going to, directly to him and basically telling him to get his girl in line or get his bitch in line is absolutely insane. Imagine doing what he did then getting annoyed at the reaction and then going to the person that you disrespected who's kind of, again, like a friend, someone's meant to be your friend and then getting annoyed that their wife is talking about it too much. Like, just imagine the balls that you have to have, the, the neck on you to think that you could get away with that sort of nonsense. It's absolutely insane.
really insane. That also goes to show, apart from him being a fighter and stuff, it just goes to show how how delusional he is and what being part of that group of people has basically done to his sense of self, where he legitimately thinks he can go around and tell people how they should and shouldn't act based off the mistakes that he makes. It's like, you don't have any part of this process at all. You've made your mistake. My reaction is my reaction. Going down to my middle finger. That's what it should be. But clearly, Bob is in a position where he can't do or say that sort of thing. But just imagine, man, imagine one of your friends, somebody you, you deem to be a friend, trying to hit up your girl and then them calling you to tell you to get your girl in line. Like, I'd be flipping sharpening the axe, mate. I mean, I'll be pulling out the longest, flipping hardest stick that I have in my, in my, in my house and trying to organise a date and time to link you and hit across the side back of your head. Just imagine, man. Honestly, these people are just awful. Again, and the next day he went on flagrant two and then talked about it, even though it was in a complimentary way. Yeah, in a complimentary way. I, so I, I don't feel is, like is we've that... said anything bad about him either. The point is, did was there um, was there a text alluding to possibly suing people? Yes, there was. Did it did it freak me out and did it make me think, oh shit, like such a small thing to sue over? But was there a lot of misunderstanding from his team and us? Yeah, and but we talked it through. But the truth is the truth, and you know it's all squared away. So, you guys, I'm just gonna get this clear. So you guys were talking about there was this comedian that people assumed was him. Yeah. That was trying to pick up all you girls, kind of a sleaze, whatever, right? Yeah. So he calls you, and says, "Bobby, get your get your woman in line." I mean, what kind of fucking animal does that? That's fucked up. Why did he didn't call you? It, he has your number, right? I would it, assume. It was your podcast. You. Yeah. It's your fucking podcast. Who the fuck? Why? What the fuck is that shit? It was not just him. It there was, was a him. whole barrage. It was. It was. A Don't phone, say the name. I'm not gonna. But okay. it was a phone call with other podcasters, and it was. That's um, some bullshit. They was, flogged you, bro. Not flogged me. They threatened my career. They called me a coward. A pussy. You've always been a pussy. I'm sorry. What? That's yeah, unacceptable. No, yeah, and and, and um, Black man. they said they would expose me. They said that That's all these things. And I was in Oklahoma shooting another, a show, and I was at dinner, and I was by myself, and I was getting. It was very traumatic for me, and it was based on whatever they did on the live. Now imagine now what's going to happen with now this. Okay. To be to play slight devil's advocate in a situation. No, so no, I get no. Let's back up Bobby's first. Bobby's point is makes complete sense. He was kind of railroaded by Kalila in some ways, if you think about it. Because I still don't understand why that Kalila story came right after what Anne Liederman said anyway. Because Anne Liederman was talking what she was talking about, right? She's going on a bit of a tangent about Brendan and that story that she just remembered that kind of pissed her off. about. I think the conversation before that was about guys thinking that it's, it's one way when it's another way. Like, take, you know, basically taking taking the idea that they can have you easily. I don't know, it was something along those kind of lines about hooking up with dudes. And then she went on to mention that drug walk story. And then Kalila went out of the blue and just threw that story out there, which happened seven years ago, right? It's not something that super recently, but it was a long time ago. And obviously, if you record those shows and you put them out there, it probably would have been nice. Maybe it's live. I'm not really sure. Maybe it was Maybe it was live. That's probably made an issue. It would have been probably nice on her end to maybe have given Bobby a heads up. Like, hey, I just mentioned this thing. It's going to go off, you know, batting down the hatches. It's going to be crazy. Maybe that's why he was caught off guard a bit about the whole situation. It's a bit mad. But that aside, most likely the people who called him to tell him to get his girl in line and berated him and bullied him, most likely those people, right? Again, we're just guessing here. We don't really know if this is true. Most likely those people are the same ones that are on King and the Sting, The Fire and the Kid and stuff. So it's most likely going to be Brian Kellen, Sam Tripoli, Chris D'Elira, maybe somebody else. Allegedly, I'd say, right? Those people are around, you'd think the people around Brendan who have got his back and feel like they owe their career to him. They're the ones that are probably going to be talking about him like that. Maybe even Eric Griffin, right? Those kind of people. But just imagine if you're Brian Kellen, the balls and the goal that you need to have to call someone and tell them that sort of thing, knowing what you just did, knowing the madness that he went through where he was accused of legit rape 
where he went through a process of trying to sue the flipping husband of the rape accuser because that guy was going around and calling comedy stores and trying to get his shows cancelled as a way to get back at him. Imagine you having a goal to do that. The guy that was accused by some store assistant that he allegedly supposedly tried to like get down to his drawers and try and chase the girl around a shop or something crazy. Imagine you that person now calling Bobby and saying, hey, get your girl in line. And then most likely Sam Tripoli, he's got, you know, again, I like the guy. I think the back end that he did with Chris was nice. But in terms of a human, there's a lot of stuff there that he's done wrong in his own life to go and call Bobby as well and say that is mad. But part of me also thinks they've kind of been able to have him in line and kind of keep him somewhat quiet and well behaved in the situation because ultimately Bobby's got crazy skeletons in his closet right when it comes to all that stuff concerning underage girls and hooking up not under sorry no I'm gonna go backwards not underage girls when it comes to consuming with you know sex workers in like the third developed third world countries and Southeast Asia and shit there's some gnarly stories there and I remember him and Kalila went on a weird press tour where they basically tried to clean it up and say that it was all lies and he didn't really say those things he didn't mean it blah 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 but clearly all those things I feel think are affecting his his ability to be really honest about the situation because he's fearing that if he says too much those guys are probably gonna you know unload the archive of clips that they've got from videos of him on other podcasts where he's mentioned those crazy stories and it's going to completely diminish what he has to say or the other theory is that they have this weird open relationship thing that again we don't have any business knowing but you know, this isn't the first instance where something has gone down involving somebody outside of their relationship. It's really murky, right? So I'm assuming they're trying to muddy the waters as much as possible to make Brendan not look like the bad guy. But again, this is what I mean, which is so awful. This is so awful, the entire thing. These guys are legit victims of this thing. They've done nothing wrong. <laughs> and yet they're having to dance around things, avoid certain same things because you don't want this to come out about you. It's just so awful. And again, it paints that entire scene to be as toxic and as um, repugnant as we all thought it was, right? From the outside looking in, as fans of podcasts or shows, you thought there's something icky about this entire thing. And now we've kind of have a slight um, insight into it, into what kind of goes on behind scenes, especially somebody like him. Bobby Lee's a legit stand-up. He's like a 30-year veteran. He's been passed at the store, mad TV, like he's an OG as they come. And still, he's been subjected to this stuff. So imagine if you're a new person who just picked up comedy because you, you saw a couple of specials on Netflix. Imagine what you're going to get treated like if Bobby gets treated like this. Now you're going to say, I'm, I'm more tougher than Bobby. Okay, cool, you're tougher than Bobby. So what? Are you going to fight every single person in the scene? Then what? Then you're not going to have a career, innit? It's so awful, man. It really is disgusting, to say the least. Like It just, it gives you no hope in humanity. This is how they treat each other. You know what I mean? That's like, they're meant to be like peers and have each other's back and brothers and sisters in arms. They're going through the same struggle, but oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's good you said that. I think it's good that you're saying that because... Because fuck them. You should, you should stand uh, up for yourself. Yeah. But I That's see so these guys up. every time. Every, all, all the but, time. But you know to be I mean? clear, but they did it. They took it there. Behavior is How, unacceptable. But totally. to be clear, that when that happened, he called me like shell shocked and crying. At which point I said, "Give me I his crying. number." Come on, I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Bobby. Yeah. That's hey, Bobby, you're, oh, you're the he, best man, the, the man that has feelings. Like, what the, no, what the fuck true. are we also talking when about? when he's, like, being spoken you to. You think she wants somebody Say that, that again that for the, for the people anything? in back. Say that again for the people Go in ahead. back. We love men that can cry. Bottom. <laughs> so, to be clear, <laughs> that was period. the... <laughs> the height of the chaos was when that happened, at which point... I don't love men that can cry. I haven't cried since 992. Don't believe these people. Don't wish yourself happy birthday. Don't retweet your own tweets. Don't reshare birthday greetings from people. Be like me, dark, mysterious, uncrying. Don't listen to these people, okay? <laughs> I I'm, said, I'm so sorry, dude. Yeah, That's so yeah. fucked up. Well, to both of you, also not yeah. having like the balls to talk to you. He has the balls to go and fight people, but like... Why does he gotta right. go? Did talk you even to know what was going on when he go called? Talk no, to your I, man. you're like, what are you guys talking about? He didn't know what it was happening. I don't. Num, number one, I don't. They were okay. First of all, they were like, we have evidence of something, right? <laughs> so they, 
right? They go, we have 50 pages of... No, they said 300 pages. Three, whatever, of, of evidence. Dude, Brandon uh, uh. Schwab can't even read, bro. How the fuck that guy bringing 300 pages of anything? <laughs> that guy's barely literate. Are you kidding me? Well, oh. this is where I think that there's some... <laughs> There's a disconnect between. <laughs> Good. That's hilarious. Honestly, give it give it up to Ethan Klein. That was a ten out of ten joke. My man can barely read, but honestly, this is probably one of the most craziest accusations I've ever heard in my entire life. They're going to Bobby Lee's going to reveal later on when he finishes his sentence that Brendan and his team of Redax legitimately fought. <laughs> that Bobby Lee was behind the flipping fire in the kids subreddit, the home of the homeless cats. This guy honestly thinks this man here was the reason why that subreddit is banging. Like he was the new CEO. He is the head of the kitchen. He's the one flipping shouting the orders. What's that? What's that? Is it what is what's the poem coast person called? Is that when you're in the kitchen, you're the line cook, but when you're the head person, like shouting things like go do this, do do that. We got one more chicken coming. Da, 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 da. What's that person called? It's not chef, is it? I don't know what that person is, but whatever, right? He thought he was that person. That's what, all he like. What? Come on, man! And that's why I guess the the friction started in the first place. So he's like, okay, if I can't take your girl, <laughs> if I can't take your girl, I'm going to ruin your reputation by accusing you of being the head founder of a subreddit that happens to be one of the best subreddits on flipping the internet. Oh well, what a crime! I'm so sorry. I provide mil hundreds of thousands of people, sometimes maybe millions, with laughs upon laughs with memes and compilations and whatnot about some of your redacted ways. Oh no, the horror. I don't want anyone to find out that. You know, I'm a stand up comedian. I don't want anyone to find out I do some other funny things on the internet. Oh, what whatever will I do if that happens? God almighty, these people, man. Gag. There's a disconnect between the information <clears throat> he's being fed by his team. I don't think it's all him. Like, he's just like, I have 300 pages of, of proof that um, of an IP address that that's linked oh, to Bobby's, please. listen to this, Ethan, what linked to Bobby's liar. computer. I was like, do you realize Bruh. how tech stupid Bobby Thank is? You. He answers <laughs> phone calls on his iPad. <laughs> do you know what I mean? My man. <laughs> Saying that, and basically that we've had, we've launched an attack on him for the past five, six years. And, and I, I told Brendan, I was like, Brendan, with all due respect, like you're not an afterthought for us. Like, why would we as a company just dedicate five, six years to this <laughs> harassment on Reddit when my sweet lover... Oh, because a lot of people hate Brandon. There's like a whole, like, movement. So, yeah, he's trying to... He blames that on you guys? A, 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 yes, and mm. so uh, now we're at a point where it's like, well... He says that he has proof that me, <laughs> for the last five or six years, that I've been on Reddit... You mean okay? In the, I got to uh, go ahead. Fuck, uh, fuck. Go, 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 go. Everybody breathe. On, I've been <laughs> spending my time. First of all, number one, I don't own a computer. I don't even know how to buy one, really. You know what I mean? He really does. <laughs> right, right. Number two, right? I don't know how to get on Reddit. I've asked her, how do you get on it? What is it? You know what I right, mean? Right, right. I'm just not tech tech savvy in that way. I, you know, it's shameful to say, but. I, it's you know, not shameful. You're an old. You're what? Are you like 50, 60? He's <laughs> fifty. Yeah. yeah. So my. You are the best looking fifty yes. year old, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. So you are. So there are pages about me as well, and me. <laughs> and me and uh, they're uh, destroying me, me, so I don't read it. Can I tell you something? Yeah, yeah. And me. And uh, they're uh, destroying me, me, so I don't read it. You know what also is absolutely highly impressive in this high entire thing when it comes to the accusation that Bobby somehow was the founder of the homeless cats. It's this some it's this realization that well for us anyway, from the outside in, it seems as if Brendan and his crew at Redux can't get it through their heads that there could be a place that exists on the internet where up to or over sixty thousand people have clearly made it their mission to highlight and to pick point point every mistake and awful thing those guys say because they don't like them as human beings. They can't even get it through their heads that that might exist. It's impossible to them. It's like, nah, no way. Of course, yes way. It's the internet. Loads of people exist on the internet, especially people who aren't, you know, US based, people who aren't maybe fans of you, people who would never be fans of you, people just enjoy trolling. It could be a reality out there for somebody, especially who's someone like Brendan, who's, you know, has a million shows out there. There's many, many hours of him speaking online. He doesn't even have it. There's no part of his brain 
that can process the idea that there might be people out there who just don't like him as a human and will go on the online and basically speak about it, you know, with randoms online and have loads of fun. They just can't get it through their heads. It just doesn't make any sense. It's crazy, these people. Man. They, I just don't like... That's a really f interesting part of it. Because I guess in some ways, you'd say, oh, you're all haters. Okay, cool, they're haters. But how many haters do you think you have? Do you think you only have 10? You only think you have, only have 100? Really? You only think you only have 100 haters? The stuff that you said over the, over the years, <laughs> your connection to Joe Rogan, the fact people that think you don't, you have a career that's undeserved. It's like, I don't know. These people are nuts. Nuts, bruv. He, he just clearly doesn't get it. Like, I just, it's impossible. How can you not like me? It's like, what? I've, I think I've mentioned it previously before, like, I've not liked people for the smallest of things. Like, sometimes you can start a job, and you, especially a new job, it's always the same, especially when you're an adult, because those are times where you get to be in environments with new people you don't know. And it can be somebody, you get you get the vibe straight away that some person just doesn't like you. They haven't met you before, they don't know anything about you, and just from the cut of your jib, or the way you wear your jacket, or how you close your Tupperware when you're eating your lunch, something about you just irks them. And there's nothing you can do to change their mind. They just don't like you. That's perfectly fine. But for whatever reason, these people, these comedians or some of them within the LA comedy scene, they just can't get it through their heads that some people just don't like them. As much people they have as for fans who get tattoos of them on their body, who go and do meet and greets and pay money to have them sign T-shirts and take pictures with them. They also can't see the other side of things where there might be people out there who just think, you know what, F you and everything you believe in. <laughs> like they can't see it. And I don't understand it. How can you be an internet personality, a content creator, and not understand how it works? There's always going to be a yin and a yang. There's always going to be people out there who don't like you and people who do like you. It just is what it is. It's not really that serious. I, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Can I tell you something? Yeah, yeah. As someone who's been in technology my whole life, yeah. people who don't know fucking anything about technology say that shit. Yeah. But I think it's, it's impossible to get that. Right. He doesn't have it. When it's anybody says they have but I think proof e against you. But Ethan, bullshit. I think that I again I'll defend him in this scenario by saying I think his team is giving him a lot of wrong information. Well, whatever. That's ultimately what yeah. him and I uh, like um were able to find common ground. It's like, look, I think I'm receiving wrong information and I'm like, I can I can understand that. I can forgive He's that. He's just trying to scare you. Dan, is it oh Dan is our tech wizard. He's walking with a bag of chips, Dan, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Not call him right yeah. now. That's Wait, we're okay. Him and I are okay now. I, don't, I doubt that, it. I'm going to say this. <laughs> no. After this, no. You will not be okay. <laughs> I agree with that. I promise you this. And this is this has opened. No, 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 no. I'm not fine. I'm fine. Or I'm totally fine. <laughs> totally fine. But I'm just saying <laughs> that this has opened up a world home. I'm not a pussy, right? I'm just saying. The thing is, is that you guys don't do stand up, right? No. Right. So I'm always around them. Yeah. Right. I always have, so I'm trying to play it politically, right? I feel like I was assaulted for something that I didn't do at all. I don't know, even know what the Wait, fuck they're talking about. You truly about. have nothing to do with it. I have nothing to do with it. And yet I was mm -hmm. being, you know what I mean? Um, they put it all cap, on you. Right? Because they're using you to try to control what, right. what Kalila's doing. Right, right. So, um, you, know, I, you know, I went to therapy and uh, about it. You know what I mean? Really? Talk about it yesterday yeah. because it's like, it was just so traumatic. And these were my friends and I had no idea what the fuck they were talking about, right? Wow. And so my whole thing was, Let's never talk about it again, ever, right? And let's just brush it on the wood rug so that I can go to comedy clubs and look them in the eye and be cordial, right? But now, right, this is a whole nother fucking thing. Just the, oh, I don't know, man. Just imagine, just imagine that sort of working environment. You have to work it. Just imagine your girlfriend's basically being is basically being penalized for being hot. Right? She's being penalized for being attractive. You then have to, as a man, as a guy, somehow feel as if you had the responsibility to now what? Beat up everyone that tries to slide in her DMs. And even worse so, because a person trying to slide into your DMs 
are the people who are working in the same industry as you, the same scene. They're meant to be your peers, meant to be your colleagues in an industry where you need people to basically have your back. You need people to rubber stamp you. You need people to open the door for you, to introduce you to so-and-so person. It's not a thing that you can just do on your own. Unless you can, I guess, since nowadays, maybe if you want to, you can just have a podcast career and then just do your thing on your own. But for the most part, you want people to have your back and to support you so that you can kind of lift each other up and then this is happening just imagine how awful that must be having to navigate this he's done nothing wrong but now he's been put into a corner where what he has to again like i say friend people with physical violence go and strike cause arguments in places but that's not going to help his career can and he clearly cares about stand-up way more than he does about podcasting because if it was podcasting he probably wouldn't give a shit just continue making shows but he clearly gets a lot of joy from being able to go on stage and to be around his comedic friends and whatnot and shoot the shit and be a silly goose and it's now being that's being put into question now because what he's dating Kalila and other men feel as if they deserve her more I just didn't I just can't figure it. it's such a bizarre situation and the, the the funny thing about it is that they seem to be willing to protect Brendan way more for his shitty behavior than they're willing to call out their own friends and peers for some of their somewhat you know, crazy indiscretions, like, you know, being accused of rape, like maybe contacting girls who are underage. That seems to be something people will just kind of cover their eyes of and just pretend didn't happen, cover their ears and keep it moving. But how dare you try to suggest that Brendan hasn't got the, you know, shouldn't be going out there and trying to slide into flipping, you know, people's DMs and shit. Come on, man. Come on. These motherfuckers. Anyway, we'll continue a bit more and then we'll jump onto other clips that mm. I got to deal with now. Yeah, I you know see I, mean? I see your point. Yeah. It just sucks because they're bullies. They are. Yeah, it sounds like you they're trying to bully you and it sucks that you're in this position now yeah. where you have to it's like a boy it sounds like some bullshit boys club where it's like she like let's be honest dude, a lot of these fucking guys have accusations against them and it's a fucking boys club and they're all protecting each other. And I'm not saying that one did one one did I have no one idea what you're talking about. Okay, fine. I'm not saying anyone did anything specifically, yeah, yeah. but it's like, hey, your girl's out of line. You know, you got to protect the boys. And it's fucked up. It's bowling bullshit, dude. Yeah, and to, and on flagrant to Andrew Schultz's podcast, he was like, I contacted Kalila. And I'm like, no, I asked Bobby for your new number, and I no, reached he out wanted to you. No, he wanted to talk to you. So, oh, okay. Let, the, uh, all right, ways. so let's, that's a two-way street. All right, let's be real. All right, he. But wanted I don't to... like the narrative that he was. He came to me with with mm -hmm. this because it took months or like two months before he even wanted to come directly yeah. to the source. And I would have been if he saw the first podcast on Trash Tuesday and said, "Hey, I really didn't like what you said. It right. kind of alluded mm -hmm. to me. That's not good for me." And then I would have said, "I understand that. I didn't realize that you would be getting." extra harassment from all right, of this. Right, I apologize. Right. I will right. not say it again. It's also not a cancelable offense to hit on a woman. It's not mm -hmm. a big deal. No. It was an anecdote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And totally. I, it could have been resolved right then and there. And I did tell To play slightly devil advocate, if it's not a big deal, why mention it? You know what I mean? It's just whatever. Anyway. Um the funny thing about this, this also reveals Brendan's tendency to lie often. And I think I've always wondered like what is it with the lying? Because one thing I've noticed about this guy is that he clearly lies with some level of um, sophistication. There's always a kernel of truth in his lies. It's not always a full-on lie. So when he said on the Flagrant 2 podcast that he, can't, he reached out to Kalila to just get this sorted. Like, I don't like to deal with middlemen, just come to me first. You know, that sort of, you know, narcissistic, stupid stuff that people do, right? Where it's like, oh, people have to kind of come to you and tell you what their issue is. You can't ever go to them. It's just nonsense, right? But he said clearly that I went and reached out to her to kind of get this sorted. I'm not going to go through middle people. I'm not going to talk for the internet. But now she's saying, no, that's not what happened. I contacted him and we then spoke about it for an hour or whatnot, and we agreed to what we agreed to. But then Bobby then counteracts and says, no, he actually asked for your number or contact you, but then he never followed through. So he feels like in his, Brendan's head, because he asked Bobby first for Kyle's number, that already means he contacted her when it wasn't that case, that she clearly rung him or texted him, hey, I'm going to call you, let's talk. 
and then they went there. So it's just, it's just such an unnecessary lie. It's such a weird lie to to say because if you say, "Hey, we went on, we got on the phone, and we spoke about it," that's still fine. But he made a clear point of saying, "No, I don't do the internet stuff." Like basically, that's what he said, right? In a roundabout way, in flagrant two, I don't do the internet stuff. I contacted her directly so he could sort this. But you didn't, though, innit? You didn't. <laughs> you didn't clearly. She said it herself out of her mouth. It's like months and months after that you kind of agreed to get on the phone and talk about it. It's just, oh yeah, it's just that's the really weird bit about him. I think that's changed over the years. Again, as as a former fan. I used to love T5K back on there on Fox. This is what something that's I've never really understood where that happened, where that shift kind of happened. Maybe it was always like that, but I feel like the ego is one thing because you're maybe hot shit and you're on Rogan now. You're doing touring, the sh- touring around the world, and you're doing shows and you're you know buying nice things for yourself and looking after your family. I can understand the ego coming from those things because we all have our motivations, right? If he's motivated by money and material things, that's not a bad thing. All good, but I just don't understand the change in character. Like my man went from being a somewhat lovable douche, no, a lovable jock, let's say, to just being a straight up douche where people are honestly looking to see him fail. You know I mean, people are out there really hoping and wishing that something bad happens in his career where he can't, you know, support his family, he has to sell his cars and stuff. Like, people are legitimately like that out there. They've got that kind of energy for him. And I don't know why that, I don't know how it happened. When, when it went from being lovable jock that everyone's kind of rooting for to then suddenly being somebody that clearly everyone thinks is a piece of shit and they really want to expose everything bad that he does, you know, with kind of laser sharp precision and crazy level of detail. It's just weird to see it in real time. And it's also crazy that he's not even re- noticing it. He's not even noticing it at all. It's just, you know, everyone's a hater. Everyone's a hater. Everyone's got cheeto fingers and shit. It's just like, tell him that when I spoke to him a week ago, I said, this was a very, very simple thing. So from here on out, moving forward, let's shake on it. If you have a problem with something I say, come to me directly. And he said the same thing. So we're good. We're good. I promise you we're okay. I promise you we're not. No. I promise you're not. And I promise you there's a wave coming now. And and that's it. Unfortunately, I I agree with Bobby just because I don't think they're going to be happy that it's out there that they're fucking bullying Bobby. Because those are these are elements that I was never going to share. These are elements that I was going to just keep. To but myself. is that okay? Like it's not okay. It's should, uh, should, but you got to live your life. Yeah, you got to live your life. No, it's right. okay with me because I'm doing. First of all, number one, um, would I say that they're friends of mine anymore? No, they're yeah. out. Right. Yeah. I stopped following them on social media. Okay. Right. And I did what I'm doing to protect myself. Mm-hmm. You know what they did was not. Of what a friend would do. But right? he did apologize to you, Bobby. Brandon did. Yeah, it, it, yeah, he did apologize. But what I'm saying is, is that the the world didn't know what had happened. Right. Right. And so it's like you know, those are the elements that I was gonna just kind of go, you know, let's brush that to the side, right? Um, I had my own way of processing it and dealing with it politically because I'm I do stand up every night. And I, I'm just around now. You know, I have to now pick and choose where I go up, right? I do. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know I, I mean, I have to go. I, I cannot go there that night because now they're there, mm-hmm. right? And it just, it, this has made it very difficult for me. You know, and um, <clears throat> it sucks. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not all right. fair. I mean, you know, it's out there, and that's why I wish you didn't do a live podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know. We're going to move on to another clip, but ultimately, this face from Ethan is basically the crux of the situation in it, right? This this uh, this reaction, where is it? Oh, where is it? Is it it's it's not right. I mean, you know, it's out there, and that's why I wish you didn't do a live podcast. <laughs> <laughs> ultimately, that's it. That's the... That's the reality of the situation. It's a shitty, it's a shitty situation, especially for Bobby Lee concerning his career. It's obviously a shitty situation. I can't even say that word properly. I'm I'm getting shawbisms. I mean, too much shawbiz flipping, polluting or damaging the way that I speak myself. It's obviously a shitty situation for Kalila herself, right? Clearly, 
because now this has been turned into a whole different thing. People are now micro analyzing or micro, yeah, basically going into forensic detail about her past dilly dances with other men and stuff. It's absolutely going crazy. I don't have any business getting involved in that sort of stuff. And in general too, it's also going to open up Ethan to a whole slew of people coming after him as well, because you know he's a person that's probably easy to basically insult and get at because of all his missteps over the years. It's just a situation which for all people involved, shitty situation for all people involved. Everybody doesn't come out of this smelling like roses. No one. It's absolutely mad. But Lee too, Lee bloody too. Um, let's move on to the next clip. What's the other one here? Um, oh yeah, this one. This was the most egregious one, isn't it? This is titled Joe Rogan uses a threat against Bobby Lee. Just if it's bad enough, right? The person who's been accused of being the slider of the DMs getting at you and telling you to get your girl in line. That's one thing. It's obviously horrible. But then to have people use Joe Rogan's name as some sort of threat to get you to be in line or to kind of to get you to be on manners and to behave. I'd, I'd, I'd be catching cases, mate. I'd be catching cases left, right, and center. I'll do a bit off the back of that. You're not going to muzzle me with the threat of another man's name. Like, are you insane? Oh, yeah, yeah. This has been the most interesting podcast I've ever done. Yeah. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was fantastic. Fantastic. You know I mean, um, yeah, it's been, I've, n I've never felt the kind of emotions that I've felt fear, but also relief. Mm. in combination with um, an unknown, mm. you know what I mean, mm. aspect of it. You know, it's like we've talked about, even aside from that, about our weight, doing this butthole thing, <laughs> this, you know I mean, Star Trek, you know what I mean, and on and on. But I'll be honest with you, the whole time I've been thinking about the, that thing. Yeah. The whole time. The yeah. first half? Yeah, it's been literally yeah, of course. lingering of course. in the back of my yeah. mind yeah. the whole fucking time. Yeah. Because... Um, <laughs> I don't do well with PTSD and trauma. You well, have a lot of it. Which is fucked up because that's kind of, you're not, you don't hide that. You're open about a lot of the stuff you've been through. And especially considering all that, it's even more fucked up the way they came at you like that. It's just, it's just fucked. It's and just And that's wrong. why people like it's him do up, that, yeah. right? Because not a lot of people will stand up and, or wanna even go there, you know? A lot, it, it, nobody wants to go through that. So he's Not doing cool. it to silence you. And there is also and something very slanderous happening was that he didn't just tell us about the Reddit thing. He was telling Rogan. He was telling Whitney. Who would believe telling, that, though? It seems insane. Who knows? But yeah, I'm just but saying, he's saying like, he's telling people shit. He's telling other people that this is what you did. This is what our company did. And that is to me That's like. Nuts. That's nuts. Well, I mean, his name, when they did assault me, right? You know, his name came up a lot, Rogan. Yeah. You know what I mean? As a threat, like we're gonna go to Rogan, and Daddy we'll Rogan, bury you, right? Stupid asshole. And so when they use oh, him, That's especially ridiculous. because I obviously love him, yeah, Joe, and I um I don't have any issues with him, and yeah. we, in fact I just saw him three weeks ago. We, it's, I love him. We Good. Hug and we talk, and he's just been so supportive of me, Joe. But when they use him, right, um, as a threat, it's kind of like because he has such a big audience right and it's like i don't know what you, you know. think joe is imagine the absolute oh, so many horrible people in that scene the fact that this happens isn't surprising i think especially if you've been paying attention somewhat i think a lot of people especially the people on the flipping homeless cats um you know the fire and the kids subreddit it have been long saying this or some even some people in the Joe Rogan subreddit have been saying this also that Joe has an out oversized influence on the scene and how people behave and what they do and how they act and how certain people are treated especially when it comes to podcasts and who gets made fun of and who people are trying to suck up to it's no surprise that most of the people who are now pally pally with Joe from the New York type of scene or people who maybe were on the outskirts of the LA scene had to come through the fire and the kid to get to Rogan. Do you know what I mean? They had to kind of get a co-sign from Brendan in that way. Similar to what that accusation that Ari Hawani put out there about um, the food truck diaries, right? He put out there the suggestion or the idea or, you know, kind of alluded to the fact that maybe 
Brendan pays guests to come on his show, but he also proposes that if you come on the Food Truck Diaries, that it could also be a pathway for you to get on to JRE, which I don't think is true because I think Joe kind of just, you know, moves to the beat of his own drum. But there is the idea around it that if the, you're nice and you're cool with the people close around Rogan, that it can bring some benefit to your career right it can some good can come of it and a good example again to make a point of it was flipping tim dylan said recently on his podcast he said something like oh um it, it, it kind of felt like he was saying part of his reason why he doesn't care about this whole thing and why it's nonsense is that the whole la scene is built on nonsense because he only got passed he felt like at the comedy store because joe rogan directly called him and told him to pass him it wasn't because they liked him and, and thought he was a funny guy it's just because he's friends with joe and it kind of exposed to him you'd imagine i'm filling in words here, he didn't say this but you'd imagine it kind of exposed to him the absurdity and the nonsense of this whole situation that you're busting your ass trying to get funny uh, trying to be funnier and trying to make up better material and get on stage more to impress these guys and the only thing that really moves the needle is if you can get joe to call them directly to tell you or to tell them that you're funny do you know what i mean the absurdity of that so it's no surprise that it could work on the opposite side you could also use joe rogan's name as a threat to kind of get people to stay in line and it makes sense because a lot of people on the subreddit have basically said in a roundabout way like why doesn't people why don't people go after brendan or say stuff about him when he does really not nonsense things or you know says retarded stuff or whatever it may be why don't anyone say anything and this is the reason why because he's basically you know one of joe rogan's closest friends and you don't want to upset joe so you don't want to upset brendan because it could get back to joe and that could damage your potential to kind of be a part of that crew and be a part that scene notice how there's no one in, in that group of people with the exception of maybe shane gillis who's basically said anything about brendan do you know what i mean they all kind of pretend like he doesn't exist or they they will just for out some empty platitudes because they know what they can do in terms of affecting their career because it's affected it for the best and it could also affect it for the negative too so i can definitely understand where this is coming from in that regard because he has such a big audience right and it's like i don't know what you, you know. think Joe is that stupid though that people can tell him, "Yo, you're not gonna have Bobby on." Right, I don't think Joe. You think he got yeah, no, to no, where Joe's he got because he that. would listen to stuff but, like that? But the fact yeah. that they go there, the you fact know, that like, they you know. go there says a lot about them. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about Joe. Yeah, but you, but you know, we when we first moved here to LA uh, from Israel. We had all kinds of shit happen to us, and we had people tell us, like, we're going to put you on a blacklist, nobody's ever going to work with you, mm. all kinds of bullshit like that that was really scary at the time, and I cried and all this stuff. And guess what? Nothing happened. Oh, it was a YouTube MCN. It was the biggest fucking oh, really? joke. Nothing, Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Of course we got not. They're very fucking clowns. successful. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what I did? The minute they started threatening, I went public with everything, fucking clowned them into bullshit. The CEO called me because they were fucking us over business-wise. Like we signed up, they said it was one way. They made it. They we signed up with them and locked in a contract. It was another way. So I said, listen, let's just part ways. It's not working. And they said, they go, you signed a contract. It's yeah. time to stop being a child. That's not and how shit. it works. He's like, I'm here. gonna tell everyone you're bad to work with. And I found out later that he was telling other big YouTubers not to work with me and shit. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just put them all on. I put everything out there, and they fucking ate shit because they're pieces of shit and, and we got out of the contract the reality is none of it really matters it does not Nothing it, matters. this is not going they have zero power over your career absolutely if, zero they have minus power but here's where and this is this is the truth is the reason why i'm scared is because i'm afraid of losing certain things but the thing is is that I, i'm getting to a place in my life where, because I, I honestly, for the last 25 years, show business and my career was so important to me because I worked so hard at it, right? Um, but I've ex I'm been trying to expand my life outside of it mm. and to go, what do I love? What else do I love? What mm. else can I do, mm. right? And once I let go of the fact that this could go away or, you know what I mean, it doesn't make me who I am, mm -hmm. right? And then there are other things that I can do and other loves. It'll be painful, right? But um, in that regard, um, I'm fine. I, I give it too much power. Mm -hmm. But you know what the truth is? That maybe you're too in your head to realize? You're Bobby Lee, dude. You're a legend, bro. You already made it. Yeah. 
nobody's gonna take anything away from you at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to care about any of those fucking guys. Yeah. You don't care about shit because the job's gonna come. The fans are there. People are gonna buy tickets to your shows because you're fucking Bobby Lee. Yeah. And you're already a legend. Yeah. You've already, uh, you're already built yourself. You don't have to care about anything anymore. And ultimately, that's the truth. And that's where everybody should be aiming to get to. Um, that's why most of these industries and scenes and stuff are always really G.A.Y. and filled with horrible people because they can play gatekeeper. They can play king and queen maker, right? They can decide whether or not you have a career or not. And ultimately, that's why I feel like places like YouTube and, you know, content creations in general and social media and stuff have been so empowering, things like Patreon and whatnot, because it allows people to have direct access to back you and the stuff that you do. And you don't have to answer to nobody. You don't have to play any political stupid games. You can just go directly to your fans. Think of even stuff like OnlyFans. Do you know what I mean? Imagine the chokehold, you know, um, flipping adult entertainment studios must have on people. If it's bad already in mainstream Hollywood, imagine how worse it must be being a flipping adult entertainment actor and you're having to deal with those people and get rights to stuff and be paid adequately and whatnot. But with OnlyFans, those kind of things, you can go directly to people who want to see you. If they want to see you bust it open, you know what I mean, or take it from several places, they can directly, just through your platform only. You don't have to answer to no one. And it takes a while to accept that that's the new reality and to be comfortable with not kind of playing the political game and whatnot, but sooner rather than later, especially if you're Bobby Lee, man, he's got, you know what I mean, Tiger Belly's doing fantastic, Bad Friends is doing well, he's got his own studio, great bunch of friends, it doesn't matter really what they have to say about things, but, you know, because he spent a long time kind of grafting to be part of this comedy scene, to get past, to be, you know, to be flipping regarded as a funny person within your community and to be spending, what, 20 plus years trying to be funny, to get better at stand-up. I can understand why it could feel precious and really something that you feel like you can't let go. But ultimately, it is what it is, isn't it? Let the chips fall what they mean to lead to fall, man. But yeah. Big up Bobby Lee, man. It's just, <laughs> man did nothing wrong, you know, and he's out of here just flipping, feeling sorry for himself and thinking he doesn't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know.